Hey guys, Murdy's here, and today I wanted to take a look at Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, and more specifically, the world as we know it now. I haven't talked about Pantheon in quite some time, and I've really wanted to start talking about its lore, as it's really turned out to be one of my absolute favorite when it comes to MMORPGs. I would like to warn you though, before I begin, when it comes to pronouncing things, I'm as bad as they come, so I beg of you to forgive me ahead of time. But now that you know that, we can officially get started. If you've at all been interested in the lore behind Pantheon, you would have navigated your way to Pantheon's official site, and I tried to read the passages explaining the races, world, and history of Terminus, and just as quickly become overwhelmed by the references to names, dates, and events that don't do a really good job when it comes to explaining things. I mean, when I first read the lore behind Terminus, I was completely lost. So today we're going to break things down, and where better to begin than the world the stories and lore take place on, the world of Terminus. Terminus is a high fantasy world broken into four continents, two of which we know as King reach and rainfall. And by taking a look on the map on the screen, you could argue that we know of three continents. However, I'm someone who would rather believe there's a lot more than snow and ice found on the continent at the very top. So for this video, as far as we know today, King's Reach and Rainfall are the only habited continents. Also, right away at looking the map, we see different icons and names of what we can expect to be that of regions. And while we don't know a lot about most of the regions, we can get a good look at certain places through the pages of lore found from each race. Starting with the human humans, we know they live in Thornfast, or Avendir Seat, found at the northernmost point of the continent King's Reach. We can conclude this from the information found within the race's lore on Pantheon's official webpage where it states, Of all the multitudes scattered across Terminus, no other group has been so defined, aided, and threatened by their leader as the humans. When first arriving on the continent that became King's Reach, the frail colony was helpless under the winter so stark it was called cursed. Only by a heavy reliance upon the nearby elves of Farthale did they outlast the tempest. Yet in the thralls of spring, the human king Amasal rallied his, pe his people to found a city all their own, Heavensong. Settled in the forest at the base of the Rhone Mountains, the town was a jewel of dedicated effort, born from a people undefined by their horrors and trials. However, if we keep reading the passage, we learn that the humans were then thrown out of Heavensong during the Age of Chaos, and we start to uncover not only where the humans are now, but information on what we can expect some of King's Reach to look like. When the Decade War turned in favor of the Sacred Six races, Avendir gained a broad reputation for battlefront leadership and also his gift for stirring oration. His famed speech of souls is still repeated amongst humans and elves, credited with reviving the hearts of the surviving dead, a reference to the broken-hearted victors of war. With the bold vision of his father, the first king out of Sanctum inspired his people with the of Thronefast, a coastal city of power that flourished into pyramid trade and commerce, hub on Terminus. At the time of Avendir's death in 525 IH, the capital city had no equal in wealth or influence, no peer in beauty or acclaim, and his passing was honored across all four continents. From this information, we can kind of conclude that the areas around Thronefest are likely to support a huge variety of merchant shops, buildings, and races, and probably have the most wealthy looking city in the game. But we know also from the bit of lore we just read, the elves can be found close by in Farthale, or next to the big tree on the map. We learn more about this tree when reading this short segment from the lore as well, where it says, The heaven gods Elios and Dith led survivors to a lush valley far in the east, the forgotten hollow of race's birth. The site which greeted the refugees melted their soul like a radiant dawn. A tree of such enormous size, it was first mistaken for a mountain, laden with clouds. This has pretty much got to be the coolest thing I've heard region-wise, and I can honestly say, when we players first finally get to land on Terminus, it's the first place that I'm going. And one of the last regions that we can really take a look at belongs to the great and nimble halflings, who made their home in Seraph Hill, a winding vertical and particular city built amongst the massive tower oaks of Wild's End. Here you will find three primary branches of their people, the Espeb, the Maiden Clan, and the North Eye, all living in relative peace, distinct but not segregated. The hollows and burrows mingle seamlessly with the titan trees, a testament to the halfling skill of adaptation. While most travelers are joyfully welcomed here, the instincts of the host race are sharper than the daggers beneath their cloaks. Before we make our way to the next continent, just recently we were shown and given a full description of an area that extends outwards from the halfling's home city called Wild's End. At first I had expected this to just be an extension of the forest, however we can see from the video you're watching it's anything but. 
And if we start to read its lore, it starts to become very interesting indeed, as it says. This mist-laden land endures as an untamed soul. Once neglected in fear by the humans, as the Deadfoot, abandoned in the fading night of the Decade War, Wild's End hosted a final salvo of skirmishes between the Revenant, the Sacred, and the Withered. For people who know the lore when it comes to the Decade War, we'll want to set our sights here. But if we keep reading, we not only get more mystery, but more of what we can expect Wild's End to look like. Today, the affairs of the halflings weave almost imperceptibly through the undomesticated pasture, which features a vast and violent swamp, a pristine pond of transcendent depth and mineral rejuvenation, a decrepit temple of the dispossessed, a craven offshot of the pure halflings, and of course their evolated home of Seraphil. For all told, this sliver of King's Reach is much greater than a mere city, and it cradles mysteries far older than its newest inhabitants. Its long and twisting hallway, where rooms are bright and dark, restorative and vicious, and the doors are never locked. I know I said the tree of Farthel was cool, but this is extremely cool. I can only imagine some sort of epic quest found here that would unlock so much for us lore-wise. But besides from that, these regions are pretty much the only ones we can get any real kind of information from at this present time. We can assume the port city of Rulin is an extension of the human city Thornfast. And while in the lore of the humans we know they traveled and seek refuge in the Silent Sanctum, we really don't know any more than that. So it's on to rainfall for us. What seems to be a larger continent, and also holding the more darker races that Terminus has to offer. The first place on our list is Saroni's Rest, a city that we can infer might just be underwater because of the tunnel found on the map if you look closely, and also because this is the home of the water-loving race, the Darkmare, who probably have one of the best lores when it comes to all the races. And while it doesn't give us exactly what Saroni's Rest looks like, it strengthens our theory that the city might just be at least partially underwater. In the chaos of their arrival, the Mir were poured into Terminus's lush sea, but the water worked through their bodies like poison and they couldn't breathe in it. In an attempt to save the race, Northai, the god of battle, sacrificed his body, which was composed of Lysul's native seas, creating a breathable sphere of water within the ocean. Such a mighty gift, yet tragically fleeting as the water soon mixed again. Even so, Northai's closest followers would not move a fin or flinch a muscle. Though they drowned, their allegiance would not succumb. With her people still in harm, Saroni rushed to help the mirror concentrating her power to transform the, and add up the body she had created long ago. Yet mysteriously, her aid was kept at bay. Sickened with grief, grief as she watched her people perish, the brave goddess gambled on another, more perilous chance, leveraging the essence of her immortality to recreate the mirror anew, even giving them a lung by which to breathe on land and legs which to walk. In a brilliant moment of sacrifice, the miraculous exchange saved the mirror, transforming them forever. But as the exhausted high mortal collapsed on the shore of Terminus, the crisis she averted wrought a fate far worse. Lastly, skipping to the end, we finally arrive with this sentence. In the present frail age, the Dark Mirror are seeking to claim the old glories of Asul. They have subdued their realm of the ocean and built a glorious city in honor of Saroni, yet breathe the surface of splendor. There is an unsettling current that runs through the deep places, where the Dark Mirror have descended like the ancient leviathans they were born to destroy. That's some juicy bit of lore when it comes to monsters such as leviathans. But information having to do with the lore, it sounds like the city is both water and land. Taking our way to a less pleasurable part of the region, we have Scargol, be depicted as miserable to the eye, profane to the nose, and a tragedy to the land upon which its inhabitants have desecrated. A monolithic fragment of Daysloth, an unformidable dead shear, towers into the terminus clouds, the lone topographical feature and marvelous silhouette that terrifies in the light of day. Sounds like a charming place to me, and overall not a part of the land I'm most excited to visit. Yet I can see the certain appeal as to how the scar would interact with my character if I was a different race. Now I'd like to say the last place I'm going to talk about doesn't give us much information as to what it would look like to players entering the game. But for any of my ogre-loving friends out there who want to know where they call home, I have this. With their hulking perseverance and a culture that values the brutal skills of battle, above refinements or leisures, the ogres of Broken Maul are perilously dismissed as primitive by the un 
uninformed. So we know from this, the ogres lie in the broken mall. But the in any information concerning on just what the broken mall would look like is weak. We have plenty of lore including battles and slaughtering of creatures that took place in and around the broken mall. So we can infer it may be a wasteland like Scargle, but truthfully we just don't know yet, and a lot of areas in Rainfall are still a mystery. But this is not by any means all of Terminus. We've all we've only begun to understand the world, let alone the races we talked about in the video. But I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned even the smallest thing. You can definitely expect more lore videos very soon for Pantheon. And before I go, I want to know, what's your favorite region in Terminus that we went over? Tell me in the comments below. I've been Meridius and I'll see you next time.